Okay, so today we're building around the D&D Honor Among Thieves Secret Lair Commander. Zank, Paladin Unbroken, is a 2-4 legendary human knight with double strike for 2 and 2 white that says, or as you control, have exalted. Now, everyone's first thought is to make this another boring Voltron commander that inevitably gets removed and all the auras go to the graveyard. In this version, we're leaning more into bad auras for our opponent's creatures that let our auras become more spread out among other permanents, and then we splash in a few other creatures with evasion that become really big threats if your opponents can't deal with them. So first are the bad auras. Demotion, Oppressive Rays, Darksteel Mutation, Ossification, Planar Disruption, Realm Breaker's Grasp, Stasis Cocoon, Trapped in the Tower, Arrest, and Intercessor's Arrest will all stop our opponents from activating a creature's activated ability. In some cases, this will completely shut down an opponent's deck if it relies too heavily on their commander. Defang will prevent all damage that a creature would do, so that can shut off some aristocrat creatures. Martial Impetus will give an opponent's creature plus one plus one and goad it when it attacks. Each other creature that's attacking one of our opponents gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Vow of Duty will give an opponent's creature plus two plus two and prevent it from attacking you or your planeswalkers. Curse of Exhaustion will stop the player from casting more than one spell each turn, so shutting down any storm deck. Spirit Link will let you gain life whenever another other creature deals damage. Put this on an opponent's creature like Gutter Snipe to gain the life whenever it deals damage to all of the opponents. We have a few of the best buffing enchantments since they are way too good not to include. These can go on creatures other than your commander in a pinch. Ethereal Armor, All That Glitters, Spirit Mantle, and Sage's Reverie will all make your creatures very difficult to deal with. In addition, Sage's Reverie will draw you a lot of cards if you happen to have a lot of auras on the field. Katilda Dawnheart Martyr is a creature that gets buffed with the number of spirits and enchantments you control. Then if you cast it for its disturb cost, it brings it back from the graveyard as an aura that gives some creature that same buff. Helm of the Gods isn't an enchantment, but it costs one to get out and one to equip, giving a creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you control, so it fits our theme and we can swap it between creatures very easily. To help dump some of these auras onto the field, we have a few creatures that make casting them cheaper. Hero of Iroas uh, will make auras cheaper and if you target it with a spell, you can put a 1-1 counter on it. Transcendent Envoy Boy has flying and makes auras cheaper, Danitha Capuchin Paragon makes auras and equipment spells cheaper, and has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. And Starfield Mystic will make all of your enchantments cheaper, and whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on it. And since auras easily find their way into the graveyard, this can get pretty big. And since we're talking about cheap things, if you like what you've seen so far, why don't you hit that like button and sub to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this in the future. It'll help these videos get out to more people who might enjoy them too and help the channel grow at the same time. Thanks. We have a lot of low cost enchantments, so we're going to need to refill our hands as often as we can. Sram, Senior Edificer, and Mesa Enchantress will let us draw cards when we cast an enchantment. Aerial Extortionist will temporarily exile a permanent when it ETBs or attacks. And whenever a player casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, you draw a card. In the same vein as card draw, we have our tutor effects to help get the aura we need when we need it. Open the Armory is a sorcery that gets an aura or equipment into your hand. Heliod's Pilgrim and Ironclad Slayer are creatures that will tutor an aura into your hand when they ETB. Moonblessed Cleric will let you tutor for an enchantment card, reveal it, shuffle your library, then put the card on top of it. And then there's Light Paws Emperor's Voice. It says whenever an aura ETBs under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura and with a different name than each other aura you control. Put that card onto the battlefield, attach to light paws, then shuffle. This one will be tricky since we're using more deep of enchantments, but since light paws ability is a triggered ability, most of our debuff enchantments that stop activated abilities will be fine if we attach those to light paws. However, the only time it's safe to do this is when we have this interesting creature on the field. Kitsuna Mystic is a 2-3 fox wizard for 3 and a white that says at the end of the turn, if it is enchanted by 2 or more enchantments, flip it. It becomes Autumn Tail Kitsune Sage, a 4-5 legendary fox wizard that says pay 1 to move target enchantment, enchanting a creature, 
to another creature. You can do this at instant speed and you can move auras between your opponent's creatures as well. If an opponent has Eldrazi Conscription on a creature, you can put it on one of your own before combat. Or if you have a protective enchantment on one creature, you can move it to another creature to protect it at instant speed instead. A very important note here is that this ability doesn't target creatures, so Shroud and Hexproof won't stop you from putting enchantments on your opponent's creatures. I've used this creature this way once before and it was a very fun match. On that note, our protective ores are Samite Blessing, Swift Reconfiguration, Gift of Immortality, Pariah, Shielded by Faith, Timely Ward, and Indestructibility, which can enchant any permanent, including one of these protection auras. Outside of auras, we also have Sphere of Safety, Ghostly Prison, and Whisper Silk Cloak, which will also make one of our creatures a colossal, unblockable threat. Now, since these enchantments will inevitably end up in the graveyard as creatures die, we're adding a bit of recursion to get our best ones back onto the field when we need them. Auromancer, Monk Idealist, and Crystal Chimes will get auras back to your hand, while Nomad Mythmaker, Retether, Sun Titan, Guardian Scale Lord, and Norika Yamazaki the Poet will all get auras back onto the battlefield attached to creatures. With the exception of Norika, all of the cards that get auras back onto the battlefield this way don't target your opponent's creatures, bypassing Shroud and Hexproof. Next, to help our single exalted attacking creature get through for damage, we're including four artifacts that will give our creatures trample. Ring of Colonia, Vorak Battlehorns, Chariot of Victory, and Haunted Cloak all have an equip cost of 1, making it very easy to put them on different creatures depending on which will be the best attackers in a turn. Then we have three miscellaneous cards that work well in this deck. Halvar, God of Battle, will give enchanted or equipped creatures double strike, basically cloning your commander, and at the beginning of each combat, you can move an aura from one creature to another target creature you control, making that creature the best attacker or blocker that you need in the moment. Its flip side can act as a bit of protection for Zank. Sword of the Realms is an equipment for one and a white, with an equipped cost of one and a white, that gives equipped creature plus two plus zero in vigilance. When it dies, you can return Turn it to its owner's hand. Thrawn Golem is a 3-3 artifact creature for 5 that says, as long as it's enchanted, it gets plus 2 plus 2 and has flying, first strike, and trample. And of course, Sigarda's Aid, an enchantment for 1 white that gives our auras and equipments flash and when an equipment TTBs, you can attach it to a target creature you control. And this is particularly handy to control our opponent's creatures and protect our own at instant speed. And then we have just 4 ramp pieces since mono white is pretty rough. Soul Ring, Marble Diamond, Mindstone, and Cloud Key if you name enchantments. Then we have 35 lands and we're done with this deck. By trying to focus on debuffing our opponent's creatures, we do kind of split our attention a little bit, but all of the creatures we included affect our enchantments in one way or another, and double as beefy swinging creatures if Zank is on the field and we have a few auras on the field with him. You can absolutely, you know, just dump them on Zank and swing with Voltron Double Strike Zank, but it's kind of too easy, isn't it? I want to build this deck, but we're going into mono white with little ramp and little card draw, which is a recipe for disaster. If we try to swap in cards to fix those problems, we start losing auras, which can be a problem since that's supposed to be our main tactic. I think Zank is a very delicate commander to get right, balance-wise, with the right mix of cards. So I think thorough deck testing and adjusting is going to be necessary to make this deck work as smoothly as possible. But it does look like a fun deck I'd want to build if I happen to pick up Zank. But what about you? What do you think about Zank Paladin Unbroken Aura Tribal? Let me know what you think in the comments below and how you decided to build it. And since I'm not sure what's coming next, if you have a suggestion or a commander you want to see on the channel, leave that in the comments as well. Like the video if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it, and until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome.